You probably know that running various Rails commands can be a little slow. Here I am in a brand new Rails application, and uh, let's try running a generator. And let's uh, make an article with a name. And notice that there's several seconds before we even get any output here. I usually edit out that wait time. Uh, same for if we do the migrations here. Anyway, I usually edit out this wait time when I'm doing these screencasts because there are several seconds of it starting up the Rails application whenever you're running any commands. This is probably most noticeable when running tests because you likely want to do those quite often. And here we're just getting no output here for quite a long time because it is starting up the Rails app. And uh, this wait time will grow as your application grows. Now in this episode, I want to show you a few different tools that you can use to make these commands run much faster. The first one here is Zeus. This will preload your Rails application so that you can run commands against it nearly instantly. It does have some fairly strict requirements here though, a recent version of OS X or Linux, and a Ruby 193 with a backported garbage collection patch. Uh, I've been running it without the patch, and it seems to work great, but you may find it necessary if you have limited RAM. To get it installed, just run gem install Zeus, and don't add it to your gem file because it's designed to run outside of Bundler through the Zeus command. So just run Zeus uh, start after that, and that will start up, basically preload your Rails application, and you can see this changing as the Rails app is loading. It changed to green for most of this because that is valid and up and running so that we can run these commands against our preloaded Rails app. Let me uh, open up another tab here. Now if we run a generator, let's, uh, instead of running Rails generate, we can run a Zeus generate, and let's generate a new model here, and that will run nearly instantly, as you can see here. Same for uh, rake db migrate. Instead of doing that, we'll want to prefix this, any rake commands with Zeus, and that will run very fast, and if we run the test, the Zeus rake test, that will also run much faster than it did before. Now we can also run a specific test file or directory through Zeus test. Uh, let's run the functional uh, directory, and that is very fast. So this is really awesome. Since we don't have to start up our Rails app every time we run one of these commands, uh, the output is just so fast uh, using Zeus here. Because the way it works is that it's preloading uh, Rails in the different environments, development and test. And if we had Cucumber set up in this app, it would work for that as well. So that way we can run any of those related commands on that preloaded environment. Now Zeus is also smart about reloading any changes. So if we do make a change to a, a model, for example, then it's going to be picked up automatically. We don't have to reload Zeus. Now let's compare the time difference with and without Zeus. If I run bundle exec to rake to be migrate, this will be without Zeus. And so since it starts with the Rails app, it took about three seconds there. And if we run it with Zeus, then it takes less than half a second. So Zeus does give us quite a big savings. Now this time will change a lot depending on the size of your app and your computer setup, so I encourage you to try it for yourself. One thing that's really nice with this setup is that you can better integrate Rails commands into your editor for really fast feedback. Uh, for example, here I am in a controller test, and let's say I want to run this specific test. I just put my cursor here and then run a given uh, bundle command, and there's the output. That test passes. However, if I make a change here, I may save it and then run it again, then we get a failure. So a really fast feedback here through Zeus. Now I'm just using a custom TextMate bundle command for this. It's just really simple. It just CDs into the TextMate's project directory and then runs a Zeus test on that given file and line number. Now one thing to be aware of if you're using Zeus is that it generates a Zeus socket file at the root of your project, and you'll probably not want to check this into your Git repository. So I recommend just echoing it into your dot get ignore file or you might want to put this in your global dot get ignore file if you have multiple projects using this so that's a quick overview of zeus it's one way to speed up your rails commands but it's certainly not the only way now let's take a look at a couple more options another similar tool is spring which will also speed up commands by preloading a rails app it does have a few notable differences though let me show you to get it installed just run gem install spring and then we can run the spring command, much like we did with Zeus. This allows us to run Rails and Rake tasks through it. However, one big difference is that it will automatically boot up your Rails app in the background on the first command. So let's say we run a spring and then let's run a Rails generate. Uh, let's generate a user model with a name. And so this one will take a little while because it's going to boot up the Rails app. But then each spring command run after that will be nearly instant because it's happening uh, on the process that's already booted up. 
And let's try running some tests through this. Uh, running the functional tests happens very fast. So this is really great. We don't have to worry about starting up our Rails app ahead of time to use this. And if we want to stop it at any time, just run a spring stop or just close the terminal session and it'll stop it. Another nice feature of Spring is that it's very configurable. You can easily change how the preloading works and also uh, what directories are watched for file changes. However, one thing to watch out for is that it doesn't use FS event by default to detect file changes. It's going to pull five times a second. Instead, you might want to add this to your gem file so that it will use FS event. That is if you're on Mac OS X or I notify for Linux. Let's move on to the last tool I want to show you here, which is Commands by David Hanemeyer Hansen. Uh, this is much simpler and doesn't try to do anything fancy like preloading uh, your Rails app in the background. It's basically just a way to run various Rails commands from within a loaded console. Let's give this a try. Uh, this one is designed to be added to your gem file called Commands, and let's specify the group to be the uh, development and test environments. And then of course run the bundle command to install it and then we can open up the rails console and here this will take a little while as normal because it is booting our rails app but then once this is loaded we can run various generators and rake tasks so let's generate a new model let's call it author and give it a name and that is very fast and we can run uh, rake db migrate and that is very fast as well now we unfortunately can't run our tests from within here because we're in the development environment so uh, let's start up our console under the test environment now before running the tests here, let me run uh, the rakedb migrate command again because uh, our test database wasn't migrated. So now we can run the tests uh, through the test command, which uh, we can specify any directory under the test directory. So let's use functional. So it'll run all the controller specs and it looks like they all passed. However, notice that this output is pretty noisy because it's showing all the SQL queries being performed. If you want to remove that, you can run active uh, record base and dot logger and let's just set it to nil and let's run our tests again and this time uh, reduces that noise. I don't think our spec is supported yet in this commands gem but I believe support is planned in the future. Now I want to finish up here by quickly mentioning Spork which I covered in episode 285. Uh, this is designed to speed up your test environment by preloading rails so it works similar to the other tools I've shown you but it's a little bit dated now and it also doesn't support other rails commands but if some of the other tools don't quite do what you want or need then you might want to use Spork. Especially if you're using Windows or JRuby I don't think the other tools I've shown you support those environments but I believe Spork does. Well, that's it for this overview of various tools to quickly run Rails commands. So if you're tired of sitting here waiting for your Rails app to load to run a command, uh, give them a try. Thanks for watching.